Okay, I'm a little bit frustrated right now, so once you're done with the tedious monotony of putting all of these as trigger capture areas, which I had messed up and that's why there was a break in the video, uh, sorry about that, I'm going to associate each control point with its capture area. So pull up the properties on your capture area, and for the control point property here, associate it with the control point that is standing right on top of it. You can use this little eyedropper tool I like and then select that, um, that capture point. So this capture area is um, associated with this control point. So do this for all of your capture areas. Associate them with the correct control points. This one associated with that one. And let's see. That one. Okay, and for stage three, I'm sorry, this is the boring part. Okay, apply. And one last thing, you will need to grab all of these capture points, get all of their properties, or you can do this individually. Can blue cap? Yes, because this is what we want in a, ca in a um, push map. Blue is the attacking team. Can red cap? No. Once uh, a capture point has been captured by blue, we don't want red taking it back. Although that would maybe be an interesting um, game type if you are so inclined to uh, to build something like that. So, but right for right now, we're going to do can red cap no, and then hit apply for all of those, and we should be totally done with our. Um, oh, uh, yeah, one more thing. We need to assign an index for each of these team control points. It's this property right here, index. Index of this point must be unique. So this index is 0. Um, this next one I'm going to put 1. And we'll need to do this to distinguish all of my ca all of the capture points in our push map. So 1, 2, 3, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 here, or five, and it doesn't really matter what that index number is, as long as it's unlike any of the other ones. It could be like 2,000 and uh, and 45 or something like that. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that they're all unique indexes. Okay, so all of those capture points should work, and now we're going to deal with the spots. So if you've been, again, if you've been following the tutorials, you should already know how to make spawns. Um, you go to your entity tool. They are entities, and it's info. Um, I think it's uh, well. Let's just see team info player team spawn right here. Um, so put a couple of these guys down. I'm just gonna put three, and let's see here. Line them up doesn't really matter. Um, so you should already know how to make these basic spawns, but we're going to give them a little bit more functionality um, because they are uh, they are now going to be um, associated with a particular round. You don't want people spawning in the first in the first stage when they need to be capturing points in the second stage because presumably there will be a large wall or some sort of break in the map so players can't go from one stage to the other when they're not supposed to. So I'm going to pull up this team spawn. Uh, I've got my map set up in a way so that I've kind of suggested that this is a spawn room. So this is going to be the blue spawn room and then I'll just put red spawn somewhere else. So for this one I'm going to say um, team uh, blue and uh, start disabled no and uh, we will deal with these uh, spawns a uh, red spawn for round and uh, blue spawn for round in just a minute um, well actually let's go ahead and enter in a value here and it'll give you a uh, an idea of um, what happens when you enter in values before you've actually created the entities that those values are are associated with so what we're going to do later is we're going to make um, entities that say round one, round two, round three, and we're going to associate each one of those with a particular round. So I'm going to refer to an entity that's right not 
that's uh, not actually there. So I'm going to type in round one. And right now it's going to stay red, which means it hasn't found an entity called round one. That's not a big deal because we're going to make one later. But uh, this is the place that the blue needs to spawn during stage, oops, during stage one. Okay. I'm going to just copy that whole, um, all of those uh, um, team spawns over. And then there is another team spawn. Again, I'm just doing this very quickly. Not exactly the way I would design it. This team spawn right here should be for red. And it is the red spawn for round, round one. Okay, make sure, and I did that correctly, so this spawn right here, again, just very quickly, I'm not adding more um, team spawns that I should, uh, just, this is for illustrative purposes, it will work though. Uh, this is for blue, for round one, and this right here is the red spawn for round one. Okay, and I'm going to do this again here lift them off a little bit off the ground. This is another team spawn for blue during, you guessed it, round two. And then here, and they're facing the wrong way, but that's okay. Red for spawn for round two. And then finally, blue, round three, and red, round three. Now, there are some maps where the old spawn for uh, the red team is taken over by the blue team. Um, and so you can change those by doing, for example, uh, let's see, this is red spawn around three. Suppose you had a fourth round, then I could uh, say I could easily say that um, this will be the blue spawn for round four, and it will automatically change the team based on what round it is. So right now it's red; it's red spawn for round three, um, and then you can continue going. Uh, you can have uh, can teams exchange spawns between rounds. But right now I've just got six distinct spawns for s three distinct rounds. Um, if you, um, and we're just gonna roll with that right now. So that should be it for our spawns. Um, and now we're going to do the duel.